from the battle. Neither truly alive nor truly dead. An undying shadow in a world of light. But soon, soon it will finally
from me. I am a prisoner of death. Only you can free me. Parks, stay out of this. What about Naomi? She's hell-bent on taking revenge for you. Naomi? You're the only one who can stop her. No, I can't. Why? Because I'm the one who killed her parents. I was young then, and couldn't bring myself to kill her too. I felt so bad that I decided to take her with me. I raised her like she was my own blood to soothe my guilty conscience. Even now she thinks of me as her brother. But from the outside, we might have seemed like a happy brother and sister. But every time I looked at her, I saw her parents' eyes staring back at me. Tell her for me. Tell her that I was the one who did it. There you are. We're just about out of time. Here's a final present from Deep Throat. I'll stop it from moving. But
now, in front of you, I can finally die. After Zanzibar, I was taken from the battle. Neither truly alive nor truly dead. An undying shadow in a world of light. But soon, soon, it will finally end. I see you! Sleeping late as usual. A snake? Liquid, you're still alive. I won't die as long as you still live. Too bad. It looks like your revolution was a failure. Just because you've destroyed Metal Gear doesn't mean I am done fighting. Fighting? What are you really after? 
A world where warriors like us are honored as we once were. As we should be. That was Big Boss's fantasy. It was his dying wish! <sighs> when he was young, during the Cold War, the world needed men like us. We were valued then. We were desired. But things... Oh, are different now. With all the liars and hypocrites running the world, war isn't what it used to be. We're losing our place in a world that no longer needs us. A world that now spurns our very existence. You should know that as well as I do. After I launch this weapon and get our billion dollars, we'll be able to bring chaos and honor back to this world gone soft. Conflict will breed conflict. New hatreds will arise. Then we'll steadily expand our sphere of influence. But as long as there are people, there will always be war. But the problem is balance. Father knew what type of a balance was best. Is that the only reason? <laughs> Isn't it reason enough for warriors such as us? I don't want that kind of world. Ha! You lie. So why are you here then? Why do you continue to follow your orders while your superiors betray you? Why did you come here? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you then. You enjoy all the killing. That's why. What? Are you denying it? Haven't you already killed most of my comrades? So that was... <laughs> I watched your face when you did it. It was filled with the joy of battle. You're wrong. There's a killer inside you. You don't have to deny it. We were created to be that way. Created? Les enfants terribles. The terrible children. That's what the project was called. It started in the 1970s. Their plan was to artificially create the most powerful soldier possible. The person that they chose as the model was the man known then as the greatest living soldier in the world. Big Boss. But Father was wounded in combat and already in a coma when they brought him in. So they created us from his cells. With a combination of 20th century analog cloning and the super baby method. Super baby method. They fertilized an egg with one of father's cells, and then let it divide into eight clone babies. Then they transferred the clones to someone's uterus, and later intentionally aborted six of the fetuses to encourage strong fetal growth. You and I were originally octuplets. Octuplets? Yes. The other six of our brothers were sacrificed to make us. We were accomplices in murder before the day we were even born. So it was you and I, two fertilized eggs with exactly the same DNA. But they weren't finished yet. They used me as a guinea pig to create a phenotype in which all of the dominant genes were expressed to create you. I got all of the recessive genes. You took everything from me before I was even born! But... You and I aren't his only children. What? The Genome Soldiers. They too are his progeny, carrying on his genetic legacy. But they're different. They're digital. With the completion of the Human Genome Project, the mysteries of humanity were laid bare. Thanks to Father's DNA, they were able to identify more than 60 soldier genes responsible for everything from strategic thinking to the proverbial killer instinct. Those soldier genes were transplanted into the members of the next generation special forces. That's how they became the genome soldiers. <laughs> That's right. The genome soldiers that you've been killing are our brothers with the same genes as ours. The genome soldiers? That's right. They are our brothers, created artificially through the alignment of nucleotides to mimic our father's genes. They too are the product of numerous sacrifices. Sacrifices? Human experiments! 
1991, the Gulf War. The military secretly injected soldiers with the soldier genes. The Gulf War syndrome that hundreds of thousands of returning soldiers complained about was a side effect of it. Ha! Everyone knows that the Gulf War syndrome was caused by exposure to depleted uranium used in the anti-tank rounds. <laughs> that was just a cover story issued by the Pentagon. First they tried to say it was post-traumatic stress disorder, then chemical or biological weapons. The poison gas detection units and the anti-serin injections, they were all just a cover-up of the secret genetic experiments. So then, the so-called Gulf War babies that have been reported by Gulf War veterans are... Yes. They, too, are our brothers and sisters. So the genome soldiers mean that the experiments were a success? Success? Don't be a fool! They're a complete failure! We are on the verge of extinction! What? Have you ever heard of the asymmetry theory? Nature tends to favor asymmetry. Those species which have gone extinct all show signs of symmetry. The genome soldiers suffer from the same problem. Signs of symmetry. So do I. As do you. That's right. We are all on the verge of death at the genetic level. We don't know when or what type of disease will occur. That's why we need the old man's genetic information. You want Big Boss's DNA so you can save your family? It's very touching. In nature, family members don't mate with each other, and yet they help each other to survive. Do you know why? It increases the chance that their genes will be passed on to a new generation. Altruism among blood relatives is a response to natural selection. It's called the selfish gene theory. You're telling me that your genes are ordering you to save the genome soldiers? You can't fight your genes. It's fate. All living things are born for the sole purpose of passing on their parents' genes. That's why I'll follow what my genes tell me. And then I'm going to go beyond. In order to break the curse of my heritage. And to do that, first, I will kill you. Look behind you! No! Is she alive? I'm not sure. She was alive a few hours ago. Poor girl kept calling your name. Meryl. Stupid woman. Falling in love with a man who doesn't even have a name. I have a name. No! We have no past, no future, and even if we did, it wouldn't be truly ours. You and I are just copies of our father, Big Boss. Let Meryl go. As soon as we've finished our business, we're almost out of time. You're talking about Fox Die? No. It seems now that the Pentagon knows that Metal Gear is destroyed, they've arrived at a decision. They won't even need a BDA. If you want the details, why don't you ask your precious Colonel Campbell? Colonel, can you hear me? Yes, I'm listening. What is the Pentagon trying to do? Colonel, answer me. The Secretary of Defense has taken over active control of this operation. He's on his way there by AWACS. What for? To bomb the place. What? Not only that, B-2 bombers just lifted off from Galena Air Force Base. They're carrying B-6113 surface-piercing tactical nuclear bombs. What? Metal Gear is destroyed. Tell the Secretary of Defense. The Secretary of Defense heard that Naomi double-crossed us, and he's worried about Fox Die. Now that there's no more danger of a nuclear strike from Metal Gear, he's going to do whatever's necessary to cover up the truth of what really happened here. He's going to drop a nuclear bomb to vaporize all the evidence along with anyone who knows anything. Don't worry, Snake. I'll stop the nuclear strike. How? I may only be a figurehead here, but I'm still officially in command of this mission. If I issue an order to delay the strike, it'll confuse the chain of command and at least buy you some time. It'll give you a chance to escape. But, Colonel... 
If you do that, it's okay, Snake. The truth is, Foxhound was already the subject of an undercover investigation. Merrill was transferred to this base just before the terrorist attack as a way of manipulating me. Those bastards. I'm sorry. They forced me to cooperate in exchange for her life. You better get out of there, Snake. Are you sure? It'll be bad for you. Don't worry. It's the least I can do for you, after all the lies. Colonel. I'm ordering them to cancel the bombing run. After that, there's no turning back. What? What are you doing? What? Snake! Mei Ling, what happened to the Colonel? I don't believe it. What happened? Snake, the Colonel! Roy Campbell has been relieved of duty. This is the Secretary of Defense, Jim Hausman. Put the Colonel back on. He's been placed under arrest for leaking top secret information and for the crime of high treason. Ridiculous. Yes, he's a ridiculous man. He truly believed that he was in command of this operation. You bastard. There won't be a speck of evidence left. I'm sure the president would want the same thing. The president ordered this? The president is a busy man. I have complete authority here. How do you plan on explaining a nuclear attack on Alaska to the media? Don't worry. We've prepared a convincing cover story. We'll simply say that the terrorists exploded a nuclear device. Smart. You'll be murdering everyone here. The scientists, the genome army, everyone. Donald, the DARPA chief is already dead. So you didn't mean to kill the DARPA chief after all. He was my friend. And you could care less about what happens to everybody else, huh? Well, if you give me the optic disc, I might consider saving them. What are you talking about? Metal Gear's test data. Donald was supposed to bring it back. I don't have it. I see. Oh well, that's okay. You two are an embarrassment from the 1970s. Our country's dirty little secret. You can't be allowed to live. Well, the bombs will be dropping soon, and you two have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> There's no way out for us. Let's finish this before the airstrike. You stole everything from me. Only your death can satisfy me. Only your death can return to me what is rightly mine. She'll make a beautiful sacrifice for our final battle. Do you see this? It will be the time limit for our final battle. This nuclear module is set to detonate at the precise moment of her death. If you win, you might still be able to save her. You could enjoy one brief moment of love before the end. If you cross this line, you fall. At this height, it will kill even you. Have at you, Snake!
death is not defeat. That's what Hemingway said. I lost Wolf too. But that wasn't defeat. She and I will be together forever. We didn't lose anything. Together forever. It's true that Wolf is dead. But our love didn't die with her. Life's more than just a game of win or lose. Don't you think? Let's live, Snake. There's a parking garage right next door. We can get to the surface from there. Come on. I released all the security locks. It'll be okay. We can escape. You have my word on it. Otacon, you've changed. I'm through regretting the past. Life isn't all about loss, you know? It started. Those guys. Seems like they only hurry when they're destroying things. Good. Let them destroy it. But they can't destroy the human spirit. Okay. Let's go. Meryl, I hope you're still watching me. Maybe I can prove myself to you after all. Come on, hustle! Snake, it's cold outside. You'll freeze like that. My sneaking suit. You better hurry! Now you look like yourself again. I'll drive. Uh-oh. A surveillance camera. Ah. Darn. No keys. I got him. Let's go.
surveillance camera. Darn, no keys. I got him. Let's go. I got it. Snake, jump in. Use my left one to fire that machine gun. Shoot back at Snake. Snake, hold on. They've placed the Colonel under arrest. I, I don't know what I should do. This will probably be your last save. I'm going to miss those proverbs of yours. Snake. Mei Ling, I have a favor to ask you. Make a hard copy of all the codec conversation data up to this point. I want some insurance. Okay, Snake, leave it to me. Snake, please, be safe for me. I'll drive! Uh-oh, a surveillance camera! Darn, no keys! I got him, let's go!
You've got to clear a path. Otacon, are you okay? I guess so. Otacon, can you move? Uh, uh, it's no use. I can't move. What happened to Liquid? I don't know, but I hope he's dead. Liquid's dead. dead, that means... Don't think about it, Snake. What happened to the air raid? No stealth bombers in sight. Snake, can you hear me? Colonel, are you okay? Colonel, what happened? The Secretary of Defense has been arrested. Early retirement. Arrested. I was able to get into contact with the President. Metal Gear, the training exercise, all of it. It was all the Secretary of Defense acting alone. Acting alone? What happened to the air raid and the nuclear strike? The orders were rescinded. The F-117s and the B-2 Spirits have returned to the base. Once again, I have complete authority over this operation. I see. 
Washington isn't stupid enough to use nukes to cover up a few secrets. I wonder about that. In any case, the danger's over. Thanks, Snake. Colonel, about Merrill. I already know. Colonel? Meryl was my daughter. What? I didn't find out until recently. I got a letter from her mother, my dead brother's wife. I was going to tell her after this operation was over. Colonel, I... It's okay, Snake. Thanks anyway. Snake, I'm sorry. I, I kept a lot of things from you. It's okay, Colonel. Snake, I'm not a Colonel. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've got a present for you. There's a snowmobile close to you. Mei Ling saw it on the satellite photos. This time of year, the glaciers are pretty calm. You should be able to ride right out of there. I'll bet the boys at the DIA and the NSA never expect you to come home alive. Me neither. I better not show my face around here. No danger of that. You two officially died after your jeep sank into the ocean. That's not too far from the truth. Also, there's a helicopter waiting for you on Fox Island. Okay, Roy. Are you gonna be okay? Don't worry. I've got an insurance policy. A hard copy of all Mei Ling's data. As long as I've got that, you, me, and Mei Ling will be fine. The battery on these nanomachines will run out soon. They won't be able to follow us. I guess we won't meet again. Don't worry. I'll pay you a visit sometime. Really? I look forward to that. Roy, just tell me one thing. What? About Fox Die. What about me? It killed Liquid. Naomi said that she wants to talk to you face to face about that. How is she? Don't worry. Mei Ling is with her right now. I'm switching over to Naomi. Snake, it's me. Naomi. I heard about my brother. I'm sorry. But he had one last message he wanted to say to you. He told me to tell you to forget about him and to go on with your own life. Frankie said that? Yeah. He also said he'll always love you. Naomi, your brother just saved you, me, in the whole world. He fought with every ounce of strength in his body. Maybe. Maybe now he's finally found some peace. He wasn't really my brother anymore. Ever since he fought with you in Zanzibar, he's been like a ghost. A ghost looking for a place to die. from Fox Die too. What about me? When am I gonna go? That's up to you. What do you mean? Everybody dies when their time is up. Yeah, so when's mine up? It's up to you how you use the time left to you. Live, Snake. It's all I can say to you. Each person is born with their fate written into their own genetic code. It's unchangeable, immutable. But that's not all there is to life. I finally realized that. I told you before the reason that I was interested in genes and DNA. Because I wanted to know who I was. Where I came from. I thought that if I analyzed my DNA, I could find out who I was, who my parents were. And I thought that if I knew that, then I'd know what path I should take in life. But I was wrong. I didn't find anything. I didn't learn anything. Just like with the genome soldiers, you can input all the genetic information, but that doesn't make them into the strongest soldiers. The most we can say about DNA is that it governs a person's potential strengths. 
potential destiny. You mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate, to be ruled by your genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. Snake, whether or not you're in the Fox Die program isn't important. The important thing is that you choose life. And then live. Don't you think, Snake? Don't worry. I'm going to choose life too. Until today, I've always looked for a reason to live. But from here on, I'm going to just live. Genes exist to pass down our hopes and dreams for the future through our children. Living is a link to the future. That's how all life works. Loving each other, teaching each other. That's how we can change the world. I finally realized it. The true meaning of life. Thank you, Snake. Until today, I've lived only for myself. Survival has been the only thing I cared about in my life. That's not just you. That's how everyone is. I only felt truly alive when I was staring death in the face. I don't know. Maybe it's written into my genes. What about now? I want to enjoy life. I really do. How about you, Otacon? Me? I feel like a new man. So what are you going to do? Continue your research? No, I'm finished with science. I'm interested in human psychology now. Sounds good. The whole reason I got into science in the first place was because I was no good with people. I was scared of them. I was scared of life. I thought that I could never understand them because they're so illogical. But I finally learned how to like people. I'm not afraid anymore. Well, you and I are more alike than I thought. I'm just tired of always being a spectator in life. I'm ready to live. I'm gonna stand on my own two feet. I'm not gonna hide anymore. You're giving up your stealth camo? Huh? Oh, yeah. You can have it. <laughs> so, this is where we say goodbye to our loves as well. Want me to drive? No, thanks. I'd rather do it myself. No problem. Where to, Snake? My real name is David, Otacon. I'm Hal, Dave. Oh, that's right. Hal. Hal and Dave. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should take a trip to Jupiter. So where are you going, Dave? Hmm. I think it's time for me to look for a new path in life. A new path? A new purpose. Will you find it? I'll find it. I know I'll find it.
You mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate, to be ruled by your genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. The important thing is that you choose life, and then live. Yes, sir. The entire unit was wiped out. Those two are still alive. The Vector? Yes, sir. Fox dies should become activated soon. Right on schedule. Yes, sir. I recovered all of Rex's dummy warhead data. No, sir. My cover is intact. Nobody knows who I really am. Yes, the DARPA chief knew my identity. But he's been disposed of. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. Mr. President.